Today, I'm going to answer the age-old question of which is the better countertop, quartz or granite? I'm going to rank these countertops according to 10 different verticals that I think are important when you're choosing a countertop. And at the end of the video, we'll have a final score for each countertop to see which one outperforms the other. If you'd like to work with me on your next kitchen project, check the link in the description below to see all the details of how we can work together to design your dream kitchen. Impact resistance. When you're considering a new countertop, especially a stone countertop, this is definitely something that you need to consider. Quartz has a great impact resistance overall. However, when a heavier object is dropped on quartz, there is that possibility that the surface can crack or chip especially if it happens on an edge, and that's normally where the problem will occur. Because in that area, the surface is unsupported by the substrate underneath, by the cabinetry, or by whatever it is that that surface is sitting on. In a previous video, I dropped a sledgehammer on quartz to see what would happen to it. And while it is pointed out that it's not really a fair test because one, it's on a stump, and two, it's a sledgehammer, it is interesting to see that this is the result compared to what we're going to see was the result with granite. So for impact resistance, I'm scoring quartz an eight out of 10. Granite on the other hand is very, very strong. While my test previously was a little bit unfair because the piece of granite that I was using was thicker, I still wanna point out that dropping a sledgehammer on granite basically did nothing. There's not even a hairline crack on that. But on an edge, the same thing can happen that happened with quartz. So that if you do drop something on the edge, you can get a crack or you could get something to chip off. Finally, some results with a sledgehammer. I'm gonna give granite a nine out of 10. Stain resistance. Quartz is very popular because it is a non-porous material, meaning that there's no place for water to penetrate. And if there's no place for water to penetrate, then there's no place for stains or bacteria or other things to get into that surface. Turmeric was the only substance that I used that actually stained the quartz. Now I did use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and it got almost all of it out, but I don't know if I would recommend using a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser as the manufacturer might say no, that would void the warranty. Otherwise, everything I tested wiped up with water very easily. So if you're thinking about a lighter quartz surface and you use a lot of turmeric in your cooking, you may wanna be careful in your selection. I'm scoring quartz an eight out of 10. We know that granite is a porous surface, so it has to be sealed. But once it's sealed, it is very, very resistant to stains. When I tested granite for stain resistance, the results were as I expected. Everything basically wiped off and over a little bit of time for the granite to dry, all the stains disappeared, even turmeric. So for stain resistance, I'm giving granite a nine out of 10. Price. So I just went to homedepot.com to get a basic idea of what quartz and granite are selling for to give us just a general starting point. Quartz averages around $69 on the lower end to about $120 on the high end. This does not take into consideration how many cutouts you have, how many edges are treated, what the polish is like on the surface, the thickness of the material, how many seams are there, and where the installation is taking place. Granite, on the other hand, is a little bit less expensive, starting at $50 and ranging to about $88. So quartz is getting a score of seven out of 10, and granite is getting a score of eight out of 10. Let's talk heat resistance. Quartz is not known to be as heat resistant as granite. Everybody sort of knows this anyway, and it is definitely something to be considered when you're purchasing this surface. Now, in my own personal testing, when I blowtorched the quartz, it lit on fire. And again, that's probably the glue and the resins just lighting on fire because of the extreme heat of the blowtorch. Discoloration definitely happened. And of course, you're not gonna be doing this in your home, I realize that, but it just gives us a clear picture that yes, this material will definitely burn. However, most people use a trivet and it's never gonna cause them a problem. So it's not, it's going to definitely happen, but there's a very high likelihood that you will burn your quartz if you put something very hot on it. And so for this reason, I'm scoring quartz a six out of 10. Granted, on the other hand, there's no resin to burn. Basically, you can light that thing on fire as much as you want with a blowtorch, and not a whole lot is going to happen. No discoloration, and it can withstand a ton of heat. And so it stands the reason that it will stand the test of time in your home as well. Granite definitely takes the win on this one. Nine out of 10. Scratch resistance. I overdid it on the scratching. I went with a screwdriver and I just went to town. And really there was very minimal damage to that surface. And when you think about how you're gonna be using your countertop, generally this is one of the areas that are really important. You're gonna be cutting on that surface. There's gonna be stuff on that surface. There's a variety of activities that can scratch your countertop and it's something that you should be considering. I don't think there's any circumstance under regular wear and tear in the kitchen, even if you're using a knife on that surface that it's gonna cause any real damage. 
I think we're safe to say that quartz is very scratch resistant. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Granite held up much the same as quartz in this regard. Very scratch resistant. You can scratch that thing all day long and you're going to get very minimal visible damage. The chances that you're going to scratch your surface are pretty minimal. And again, this could depend on the type of granite you're using, the mineral makeup of that stone, on whether or not certain minerals will scratch easier than others. I'm also scoring granite a 9 out of 10. Warranty. I looked at a few brands of quartz. I found that most of them have a limited lifetime warranty on the stone, on the slab itself. So unless you do something crazy to it, like I was doing out in the shed with beating it and banging it and lighting it on fire, of course, those things are not going to be covered under warranty. But for a regular wear and tear in the kitchen, you got a great warranty, a lifetime warranty on quartz. What else can you ask for? I'm going to score quartz, surprisingly, a 10 out of 10 in terms of warranty. I think it's really, really good. Granite, on the other hand, not so great in terms of warranty. Usually on granite, the only warranty you're going to receive is a stain guard warranty. So if that granite is pre-sealed from the manufacturer, from the fabricator, it usually will come with a warranty to say this sealant is going to stand the test of time and you're not going to be able to stain the surface. But in all other regards, the warranty isn't that great. You're dealing with a natural product, so how can you warranty something that comes from nature? The only thing they can warranty is the human process of putting on the sealer. So I'm going to score granite a 6 out of 10 in terms of warranty. Maintenance. I don't think you can find a better surface to maintain than quartz. I mean, you don't have to do anything to it. It's non-porous. It's just easy. You don't have to seal it. There's nothing. You just clean it with generally soap and water, and that's it. So in terms of maintenance, I'm going to give quartz a 10 out of 10. Now granite, a little different. As long as it comes pre-sealed, is also pretty much no maintenance. You just clean it like you would quartz and away you go. You don't have to actually do anything to it. However, if it doesn't come pre-sealed and you have to seal it yourself, that's maintenance. And so for that reason, I'm going to score granite a 9 out of 10. Finish options. Quartz usually comes with a polished finish. However, you can get what's called natural, which has just a little bit less sheen. You can get honed, which gives you more of a matte finish. You can also get what's called concrete and rough. So there's a little bit of variety out there if you're going to choose quartz. Granite's very similar. You have polished, you have honed, you have leathered. You can get what's called flamed. You have some options when it comes to finishing techniques. But the one finish that's pretty much exclusive is polished. Most people, when they buy a stone surface, they want it polished. Now, there are some people that are going towards a honed finish or a matte finish, but in terms of just the overall quantity of people who want a polished surface, that's mostly what people are buying. And so there is a little bit of difference in a polished surface between quartz and granite. You can't polish quartz as much as you can granite. Where granite is just stone, you can polish that to be very, very glossy. Quartz, on the other hand, because of the resin that's involved in the manufacturing process, you can only polish it to a certain degree. If you're buying granite or if you're buying quartz, generally you're probably not too concerned about how polished it is, but it is something to consider. In terms of finish options, I'm rating both of these a 9 out of 10. Value. Value is not something you normally consider when you're purchasing your countertop, but you should. Because the market is so geared towards selling quartz countertop, because quartz countertop has been such a force in the stone industry, in the solid surface industry, it can't be ignored that buying quartz for your home is going to increase the value of that home more than any other surface. Where granite once held that seed of authority, it just doesn't anymore. Most people, when they think of granite, think older. And while there's many slabs of stone out there that look absolutely gorgeous and I would love to have in my own home, in terms of value, it's just not the same. I'm going to give quartz a very solid 10 out of 10 when it comes to value. And although I love granite and I would love to have granite even in my own home, the general consensus is that it's the old guard. It's not really what's new and current. And for that reason, I'm sorry, granite, but I have to give you a 7 out of 10. Durability. Quartz is about as durable as you're ever going to need for regular wear and tear in your kitchen. From my personal experience in the industry of over 20 years of selling solid surfaces, I've never had a customer come back and complain that their quartz countertop was not durable enough. Considering all aspects of quartz together in terms of how scratch resistant and how heat resistant and how impact resistant and all that other stuff that we looked at, I think that it's best to say that quartz is a good solid 8 out of 10 when it comes to overall durability. Granite is as durable as quartz in just about all aspects. The only issue I have with granite in the durability factor is that it is susceptible to thermal shock. But otherwise, when you're dealing with granite, you are dealing with a solid piece of rock. And rock is about as durable as you're going to get for any surface that's out there. 
I'm going to give it a total grade of a 9 out of 10 in terms of overall durability. So the final score is very, very close. I don't know if you've been keeping track and hopefully I didn't get my math wrong, but Quartz comes in at an 8.5 out of 10. And Granite comes in at an 8.4 out of 10. If you are thinking about buying Quartz, you should check out this video because it tells you lots of details about how it's manufactured and the things you should be considering when you're purchasing that type of surface.